Hey guys, Lago here. Welcome to another Toy Migos review. And this time we're gonna be taking a look at something huge, something massive. You know, I like big figures and um, things that move fairly well. Uh, we're gonna be taking a look at that Premium DNA's General Slaughter. I almost said Sergeant Slaughter, but General Slaughter. And let me show you how big this thing is. Ooh, here you have it, my little baby. But look at that, look at that, compared to my head. This thing is amazing. This thing is huge, but can it move? What are the details like? Is it as impressive as it looks? Let's find out. First, let's look at the figure in detail. Here's one of the head sculpts. This is the uh, normal head sculpt. And you can see the amount of paint being used here and it's like brushed on it all has kind of a brush look to it you could see it over here on the shoulder pads you got a little bit of some shading going on you can see a little bit of that silver coming out of that purple on the gauntlets there and everything has so, some sort of wash to it there's a lot of textures um, you could see the fishnets here all painted really nicely this thing has a lot of nice paint details. Next, I wanted to show the back of the figure. Here you could see a lot of that brush detail going on in the skin. You could also see it over here on the gauntlets here. And one of the things that's really impressive is the sculpt on these hands. I like how those nails protrude outwards and there's like a bubbliness and roundness to those hands. Extremely um, exaggerated features but yet a little bit realistic so I like that little contrast going on there. Now let's take a look at the height of this figure. This is standing upright, it's about 18 inches, maybe a little bit longer with the, uh, the mohawk there. Let's take a look at the accessories. First we have two fists, and you can see again nails um, and the sculpt with the folding of the skin and those fingers, looks really nice. It's a nice little airbrush look going on on the tops. And they're not too heavy, they have a nice solid feel to them have these hinges over there in the wrist area. Next up we have the battle damaged head sculpt and this one is a lot more different than the others because he has kind of like a more um, like swollen eye, you have all the little blood detail, it's even missing some teeth over here on the side you can see it's missing some teeth. The horns have cracks and they even sculpt the bottom. So I, I love the attention to detail here. You have that brushed look. I love the way that the horns are painted. And I like that it's different. You know, it has the, uh, the swollen eye and the teeth are missing. It's very different. It's not just they change the eyes. Next up, we have a drooling look. This looks like he's a little bit more upset and he has drool, like a pink drool coming out. And again, they changed the eyes and the, the horns now are kind of going downward. So again, we have the shading all over the place. We have the sculpt on the top and the bottom. Um, they really went all out with these sculpts and I, I really, really do like them. Now let's take a look at how this moves. Let's take a look at articulation. Here we have the head, it can rotate all the way around. It can go up and down about this much. It can tilt about that much. The shoulder pads don't move, they're just pegged on. Arms go out about this much. And we also have a bicep swivel. Nice smooth one too, it moves very smoothly. 
Next up, let's take a look at the double jointed elbow. It is double jointed as you can see, but the range is a little bit, uh, a little bit lacking here. Again, it's because it's a very, very large figure and the big biceps. Here we have the wrist going up and down and can also rotate. Now we could look at the ab crunch going all the way down a decent amount. Do have to use a little bit of strength here to move it around and it can twist on the waist. It takes a little bit of effort but it can twist even more than that. Now the legs go out about that much, not much going on there. And then we have a double jointed knee that can bend pretty far. Followed by the ankle articulation where it can rotate a little bit and tilt a little bit going up and down a slight bit. Now this thing is uh, very, very large, but I think, you know, due to the sculpt, I think it's supposed to be hunched like this. You can see that the sculpt is a little bit lacking at the top of the, the ab section, but it could balance pretty well. Now let's take a look at some size comparisons. Here we have Zitz from Beeman DNA's Battletoads line. And you can see how this guy just towers over him. It's impressive how large it is. Uh, next up, we have a Marvel Legends War Machine. And again, it's, it's no comparison. I just wanted to show so you guys can get an idea for the scale here. Followed by a Mafex or Mafex um, Scarlet or Ben Riley Spider-Man. Next up, we have a Super 7 Wrath, and I think uh, they look nice together. The style they're going for kind of work well with each other. Next up, we have an SHF Goku. Now you can see it goes about to the knee. His legs are wide open, so it's about the knee area. Next we have a Marvel Select Hulk, and this is a pretty big bit figure, so you can see that it's still not as big, and double, maybe even a little bit more than double the size. Next up we have the Red Ribbon Robot, make sure you check out the review on my channel, Lyra Land, quick plug. But yeah, this is, uh, this is pretty big, and... <laughs> The General Slaughter is still much bigger. Next we have a 3A Ultron. This is a 1-6 figure. I just wanted to show how big it is compared to 1-6 figures. Next we have a Hot Toys Spider-Man. Yet again, it's much larger. So this guy is huge. It's as simple as that. It's huge. You didn't think there'd be a Lago video without a Vegeta. Of course, here we have Vegeta, the Prince of All Saiyans. Perfect. Here are some close-ups of the um, battle damaged head. And I just wanted to show you guys how amazing the sculpt and paint are, is in this uh, in this figure. One thing that's not showing too much on the video is the change of sheens in the teeth. It does have more of a shiny glossy look to it compared to the more flat look of the, uh, the head sculpt. And I love this attention to detail everywhere. The shoulder pads are different. The cracks are in different areas. Um, it's just it's just it's it's a fun thing to look at.
next we have a look at the fists being used but also from top to bottom you get to see the figure in all its glory the fishnets um, you know they're interesting but very 90s and all the shading and airbrushing we have there and here we have the more drooled face and one thing I forgot to mention earlier is that the hair does change as well sometimes it's folded down we're in an upward and again the sculpt is different compared to other head sculpts and the change of the gloss with the flatness on the teeth and the mouth and it's just again um, it's it's a nice figure to look at my goodness what a what an impressive figure shout out to premium dna sending these out and um it was great talking to you guys at toy fair and you know th this thing is 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 i i think it's it's incredible i think it's great i think if you are on the market for a huge expressive cartoon looking uh, animal this is the one for you it's bigger than a lot of one six figures it has double joints they move pretty well, it balances well, the paint apps are there, the quality in plastic is there. Uh, I don't think you could get a, go wrong with this. Three different head sculpts, two fists, and two open hands, and there you have it. Premium DNA, wave one, general slaughter. Um, thanks for watching. Make sure you follow Toy Meagles, watch us on Tuesdays, uh, 8 p.m. Eastern time, Chat Meagles Assemble and also on Thursdays with They're Not Dolls. Uh, and don't forget to subscribe to Lagoland. Just trying to get those, uh, those subscribers up. We'll see how that goes. But thank you very much, guys, and I'll see you later. Peace.